The window for using the franchise tag on free agents begins today. What is the plan for Caleb McGarry? Does he get the tag? Does he get a long-term contract? Or do the Falcons let him walk in free agency? My guest, Dave Choate of the Falcoholic, will weigh in on that topic on today's Locked on Falcons. You are Locked on Falcons, your daily Atlanta Falcons podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. So, guys, you know me. I'm Aaron Freeman, a.k.a. Mr. Drew, a.k.a. Sirius Black, and, of course, the most humble host of this illustrious Locked on Falcons podcast. And today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook, the official sportsbook of the NFL. Make every moment more by visiting FanDuel.com slash Locked on today to get started. And, guys, we thank you for making Locked on Falcons your first listen each and every day. Of course, it's free and available Monday through Friday on a variety of podcast platforms, including YouTube. If you subscribe to us on YouTube, give us a like, right? You can get the video version of the podcast the night before the audio drops. And you can also check out Locked on Falcons by downloading the Locked on Sports Atlanta app on your Roku and Amazon Fire TV. So I am, of course, joined by Dave Choate, the Falcoholic himself on today's episode. And we're going to talk starting off about sort of the news of the day. And that is, of course, wishing a happy birthday to Kayla McGarry, who many of you are listening to this episode on Wednesday, February 22nd. It is today. It's Kayla McGarry's 28th birthday. But, you know, in addition to Kayla McGarry, you know, getting one step closer to the big 3-0, it is kind of topical because uh, today opens up the the two-week window where NFL teams can begin to start to use franchise and transition tags on various players and i know at least here on lockdown falcons we'll probably in a roughly about two weeks towards the end of that deadline that ends on march 7th we'll probably devote a full episode to you know the case for and against keeping kayla mcgarry uh this offseason but that franchise tag uh for an offensive lineman like kayla mcgarry is 18.244 million dollars and so dave i asked you the question when it comes to kayla mcgarry should the Falcons tag him? Should they pay him a long-term deal? Or should they move on from Kayla McGarry this offseason? Where are your thoughts on the Kayla McGarry question? It's a it's a big question. I feel like it's, I don't know if you are the same, but I've been going back and forth on that one for what feels like a full calendar year. But um, I think where I've landed is my expectation and probably I, I think what they should do is try to explore a three to four year deal with him. Um, you know, whether he makes it to the end of that contract, considering he'll be into his well into his thirties by the time he reaches, you know, year three to say nothing of four, I don't know. But I, I think, you know, you never really had a question with him about, you know, work ethic. So it's not like he's going to slip back into bad habits or anything like that. It feels like the step forward he took is something he can sustain. And given the way that this offense operates, given how important the run is to them, you know, he feels like a key cog there. So I I do think, you know, they might end up franchise tagging him. I think they'd prefer not to, but it would be in my mind in lieu of signing a long-term deal, which is what I expect them to get done um, before the end of the the off season here. So I, I know that's a significant chunk of cap space and it's not the most exciting Uh, signing, re-signing in the world, but I do think they'll get that done. I think failing that, my expectation would be that they look for a solution in the draft, which of course could take a little bit of time to pay off, right as you're hoping to be a better team in 2023. So that's, again, another reason to go ahead and and back up the money train for for Caleb and Gary. Yeah, you know, I'm not a big fan of the idea of tagging him. It just feels like you either need to, you know, as they say, go or get off the pot when it comes to him if you if you want to you know stabilize that right tackle position for the next couple of years and pay him you know give him the guaranteed money if you don't necessarily feel great about paying him the type of price tag and you know that probably will be anywhere between 12 and 16 million a year i would assume you know probably you know a lot of people think it will be towards the upper end of that range um, if you don't feel good about paying them, then don't pay them and just move on. Like, I think while 
you may take a step back at that position. If the ideas will take two steps forward in the future at that position, then I think in the long run, that is the better choice. So for me, yeah, I wouldn't necessarily entertain the tag. It just feels like a, a lot of money to devote to a player that you're not sure on. Um, so make a choice and, 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 and roll with that and embrace it fully. If you, that means drafting a rookie and dealing with him going through his lumps early in his career, then so be it. Hopefully with Dwayne Ledford, you feel pretty good about that paying off for you uh, in the long term. Uh, and if not, then, then pay Caleb McGarry. But I will go on record and say I, my expectation is that they'll find a way to work out a deal with Caleb McGarry. Um, and we'll we'll see from there. Any any other additional thoughts that you want to add there, Dave? No, I, I just think, you know, it's one of those things. If this was a, a bit more of a pass happy offense, you know, or I, I suppose if they want to make it a bit more of a pass happy offense, I think that's the that would be a major determining factor in whether they keep McGarry or not, because I don't think he's ever going to be elite in pass protection on that right side. Um, so at that point, you talk yourself into maybe somebody who does have that kind of upside. So, um, but I, I don't give it, given the state of the offense, given our expectations, the quarterback, which I know we'll talk about later, I, I would think they would just bring him back. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll, we'll, we'll see how that all plays out. I'm sure that will continue to be, a conversation here on Locked on Falcons and elsewhere uh, amongst Falcon fans for the, the coming weeks. Uh, again, they have until March 7th to determine if they're going to tag uh, Kayla McGarry, although I, I imagine most Falcon fans are going to be paying a little bit more attention to some of the other players that will be getting the franchise tag, which you know could potentially mean that they are off the market or potentially on the market uh, later in, in terms of a tag and trade situation. But again, that's a topic for another day. We'll continue today's Locked on Falcons here talking about what should be the Falcons off season priorities in terms of you know whether that is upgrading the defense whether that's making a long-term decision at the quarterback or something else we'll pick dave's brain on that as we continue today's locked on falcons but i want to tell you about FanDuel. you know we're moving past nfl offseason priorities to the fact that the nba season is still going strong coming off the all-star break with games coming now it's the perfect opportunity to download FanDuel America's number one sports book the app is safe it's secure it's super easy to use and if you're a new customer to FanDuel you get a no sweat first bet up to $1,000 that's bonus bets back if your first bet doesn't win and the thing I love about FanDuel is you know you got games in the NBA season coming up, I don't really care who wins these games, but I would like to make a little bit of money off of it. And you got Thursday night, you got the Mavs versus the Spurs, and I don't care again who who wins that game. But you know, I'll build a parlay around Luka Doncic and Kyrie Irving, and FanDuel has a really easy parlay builder where I can look at Luka hitting two or more threes in that game, Kyrie getting twenty plus points, um, you know, or six or more assists, and I get a nice little payout. So whether you want to bet the point spread, the money line, or build a parlay yourself, make sure you download FanDuel and make sure you get that no sweat first bet up to one thousand dollars in bonus bets when you go to FanDuel.com slash locked on. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on to learn more make every moment more with FanDuel an official sports betting partner of the NBA so continuing today's episode here with Dave Choate of the Falcoholic and Dave I want to get your thoughts on sort of what you think the biggest priorities are this offseason I know at least for me I think there are kind of two major questions lingering over this team I think one of them is who is the long-term answer for the Falcons at quarterback I personally don't think the Falcons need to feel pressure to answer that question this offseason. They can kind of punt that into the future. But I do think the other question that hangs over this team that is kind of a, a non-negotiable for them that they do need to work on this offseason is getting the defense better. And I do feel like with the money that they have this offseason that they can really make major strides in, in improving that defense. I guess my question for you is, do you have a similar opinion or are there other sort of non-negotiables that you are hoping that by the time we get to this upcoming 2023 season are other areas of the roster that they must improve? Yeah, I think those are the big two, right? Like you have to answer the quarterback question. You have to, you know, if you're rolling with Ritter, um, if you're a Ritter rider, so to speak, um, you, you do have to have a compelling veteran backup in case, you know, he gets hurt, he falters, you know, you have to have that. If you're making a, a big splash, a, 
a Lamar Jackson, a Daniel Jones. I'll throw that out there just to make people angry. Yes. Um, you know, it's then you you've got to do that. So whatever the decision is, like it doesn't have to be, as you said, you know, the long term solution set in stone. But I, I do need to know that there's a good plan there. Right. Um, but the defense is the number one priority. I think you finally have the resources on hand and, and some of the young building blocks. I do really like, you know, Arnold Epichetti, A.J. Terrell, Richie Grant. Um, so you have the pieces to put that puzzle together finally and have it actually resemble a defense instead of a bunch of puzzle pieces you smushed together um, because you felt like it. So it, that is the number one thing. It doesn't matter really to me whether you build it inside out or outside in. So long as you have a thoughtful plan, you're, you're putting the resources toward it. And this defense is finally much better than it has been the previous year, which I think we've been, you know, at least since 2018 saying it's going to be better this year. And it's, it's not. So the, the only other non-negotiable, I guess I would have um, after watching this offense the last couple of years is let's get, doesn't have to be a huge expenditure, but let's get that number two receiver. Let's get somebody they feel good about. I think in between, you know, um, sort of the injury nightmares of, of 2020 and 2021, and then Brian Edwards not panning out last year, they just really haven't had that compelling second option at receiver. And e even in, you know, uh, Arthur Smith's offense, which is maybe less receiver reliant in general than a lot of teams, he's always kind of had that, that solid number two, uh, certainly in his Tennessee days to work with. And it just hasn't really happened here. You know, Zacchaeus's superior effort last year, notwithstanding. So to me, that, that has to be something that they fix it, that, You know, if it's Alan Lazard, if it's Jacoby Myers, which I, I guess neither will probably be all that cheap, you know, you're not going to get excited about those names, but they would help a lot. Yeah, I, I would agree with you. I, I think there will be options for the Falcons to secure that number two. Uh, they may be expensive options, but you know that's just kind of the nature of the beast. We can we can thank the Jacksonville Jaguars and Christian Kirk for uh, yes. you know yeah. letting us all play in their very expensive number two receiver sandbox uh, that they have to impress us with. Um, for me kind of piggybacking on that point another non-negotiable i have is not necessarily something that they can resolve in the off season but something that needs to be resolved in season is i, I can't have another year of fantasy football twitter complaining about kyle pitts's usage right like yeah, yeah. we we can't have another season of being like oh, arthur smith doesn't know how to use this dynamic weapon that the falcons have so that to me is a non like that conversation needs to end uh in in 2023 so any any question marks about Kyle Pitts's value need to be over. That that for me is is another non negotiable. That's a that's a really good one too because, you know, we can talk up his blocking and we can you know talk about quarterback play, which is all fair and good. But again, highest drafted tight end of all time, clearly a dynamic receiving threat, and we just it feels like they barely squeeze that orange. So we've got to we've got to get more. I, I agree. That's a, a really good non-negotiable. If only so we don't have to hear the complaint, you know, <laughs> if only for that reason. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Um, you know, the, the jokes are fun. Uh, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll continue to make the jokes. Don't, oh, don't get me wrong. But, um, you know, I, I, I need them to just be, Hey, we're just joking. Not, this is a real issue, uh, yeah. type of stuff. So, um, any anything else for you, Dave? But before we move on and, and talk about that that quarterback situation, no, I would like to see them. Um, it's it's really not a non negotiable, I guess. But I would like to see what the long term solution at left guard is going to be. Um, you can continue to stopgap it. Obviously, if you're paying McGarry, Matthews, and Lindstrom in the near future, maybe left guard is just that position that you're you're kind of cycling options through. But it would be really interesting to see is Jalen Mayfield you know, still a piece of the puzzle there. Do they injury problems, notwithstanding like Elijah Wilkinson enough to give him a multi-year deal and see what that looks like. Um, is Justin Schaefer in there? So I, I am curious to see that camp battle. And I, I would like them ideally to have that young, cheap, capable, long-term option when okay. all is said and done. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think that makes sense. Yeah. Uh, my expectation right now is that it'll be Wilkinson versus, Hennessy to compete for that starting spot, but 
they, they should have some opportunities, whether that's in free agency or the draft, to go out there and get a guy that, you know, at least based off of the amount of money invested or the high draft capital invested that you would assume is going to be that guy. So we'll see if the Falcons, you know, cross that bridge this offseason. But we will circle back and talk about the quarterback situation. And I'll basically ask Dave the question. I'll probably ask every podcast guest over the next two to three weeks here on Lockdown Falcons, who's going to be the quarterback in week one. We'll pick Dave's brain on that as we continue. But, you know, uh, one possibility for the Falcons quarterback is potentially in the draft. And if you want to get the low down on who are going to be the top quarterbacks in the draft, of course, check out locked on NFL draft podcast, your daily podcast covering the 2023 NFL draft and beyond with new host, Damian Parson and Keith Sanchez from the draft network. Of course, locked on NFL draft is free and available on all the same podcast platforms. You check out locked on Falcons, including on YouTube. So, Dave, let's circle back to that second big question hanging over the football team. And you already discussed how, at the very least, if they're not going to, you know, make a, a play for a Lamar Jackson type of uh, obvious long term solution, you would like to see them at least solidify uh, the depth chart behind Desmond Ritter uh, and get a, a capable backup there. But, you know, asking you the question that, uh, as I said, I'll be asking a lot of people over the next couple of weeks, uh, who do you think is going to be under center for the Falcons in week one? I'll, uh, I'll just echo Daniel Flick from yesterday and say, I, I do expect it to be Ritter. Um, I think I've expected it to be Ritter all along. Obviously Lamar Jackson is, you know, price notwithstanding um, a really intriguing option. If that trade does become a possibility uh, and they're seriously entertaining it, that would be, fine by me, even if it increases the degree of difficulty for building the rest of the roster, but I don't expect it to. I expect Ritter to be that option. I think that Arthur Blank maybe gave away the game a little bit um, with his praise for Ritter, which was, you know, a step above what Terry Fontenot has said, which was a step above what Arthur Smith had said, um, but it appears they they like him. It appears that they want to give him a fair shake at it after that, that four-game addition. And, and I said it when he was drafted, and I still believe that he can be a good quarterback. You know, you're not going to necessarily count on him to be an elite guy, but I am of the opinion that Arthur Smith and company believe they do not necessarily need an elite quarterback to make this thing work, especially with an elite ground game. So I, I think, you know, the benefits of having a quarterback you like, who you think can be good on a really cheap contract, I think are going to tempt them to try that out in 2023. Uh, you know, they'll get that veteran backup that they can trust and they'll give him this year to sort of put his stamp on it. And if he turns out to be the guy, then you have a couple more years of affordable play from him, which is terrific. You can continue to build this roster. If it doesn't, it's a great draft class in 2024. And frankly, Lamar Jackson might be coming out of a franchise tag situation and they might want to trade him then. So, you know, I don't think this is a do or die situation where they have to get this other quarterback this year I think and I know others have said it as well but it is I think a year to evaluate what Ritter can give you and if it's as good as we think then great and if not you'll have options yeah I, th I think that's the key point like I'll probably wind up discussing this a little bit later uh this week on the pod but I I do feel like we are entering an era of of NFL football where this quarterback carousel that we've seen the last couple of years is going to be the new normal in the NFL. Basically my half baked theory is that unless you have a uh, Patrick Mahomes a Josh Allen, a Joe Burrow and Justin Herbert guys that are going to get paid, teams are going to be basically willing to, you know, go with the one year fix um, chasing the the short term fix, whether that's you know a Desmond Ritter, whether that's uh, Jimmy Garoppolo, whether that's you know um, uh, another uh, Caleb Williams, uh, whatever, right? So I I do feel like the fear of being in quarterback purgatory is probably less in today's NFL than it used to be, um, where I do feel like you're going to have available options to upgrade. Whether you're going to love those options is, is certainly going it's to be thing, yeah. uh, the situation, but you will have op opportunities, you know, pretty much every year that if you want to make a change at the quarterback position, you can. Um, and it's just a question of whether you you do that. You know, it, uh, 
if you're outside that sort of elite tier uh, of teams like Kansas City. You'll always be chasing trying to find the next Mahomes in the next borough. Um, but, you know, if you don't find that guy, I don't think it is going to be as dire a situation as it has been for the last few decades in the NFL. Um, but that is a topic um, that maybe I can explore at a future date uh, on on the podcast. But any any thoughts on, on that notion, I guess, Dave, to, to close out today's episode? No, I, I think there's I think there's something to that. And I, I think it's reflected somewhat in. Um, you know, I was trying to put together an article on this. I don't think the the numbers are really there to, to justify this half big notion that I have, but it, it certainly has seemed to me recently that the teams are a little bit more willing to invest in the guy that isn't the top ten pick. You know, uh, it's Kenny Pickett, it's maybe Desmond Ritter, it's Sam Howell. Um, where if you just like a guy, it doesn't. It, it's not necessarily fatal that he was drafted later on, especially in a in a weird class like we had a year ago where, you know, the third round quarterback might normally be the sixth guy drafted. And last year it was the second. So, you know, I, I'm not guaranteeing any kind of success for Ritter, but I do think to your point, teams that don't have that option and aren't paying, you know, 40 to $50 million for that option are going to be willing to try to win a different way um, because it's all about finding those efficiencies and those ways around the Mahomes's. Uh, and Jalen Hurts of the world. So I, I think we may see that play out. Yeah. And you saying that reminds me that I haven't written an article at the Falcoholic in, in a couple of weeks. So I, I might as well throw that up, this half baked idea as a, there we go. I like it as an article. So uh, I'll, I'll work on that this week. Um, maybe instead of, of to, taking too deep a dive on the podcast. But I, I guess my last question for you, Dave, is you know, talking about the idea of Desmond Ritter being. The starter, is there any particular quarterback that you have kind of your eye on if you're uh, pointing in the direction as the guy that you would think would be the ideal get for that number two guy that can either push Ritter or, you know, you know, help groom him or whatever you think that that role is for that number two quarterback here in Atlanta this year? Yeah, I think it's uh, Jacoby Brissett for me. Um, to me, just an ideal blend of like, uh, you know, everybody raves about him as a teammate. And as a leader, which I think is is an important thing, if you're going to step into that situation, I think he can start at, at a high enough level that he could weather as long a stretch as you need him to, or if Ritter really falters the whole season, hopefully that's not the case. But to me, he's sort of that ideal blend of, you know, he won't be cheap, but he's affordable enough for really high end backup slash, um, you know, spot starter when you need it. And he's got the right mix of, of skills and, and intangibles to be a really good fit. So that would be the guy. I, I imagine he'll maybe get a better option elsewhere. So he may not land here. But if that could happen, that would be the dream. Yeah, I, I have a feeling he'll probably wind up in Carolina. Uh, but yeah, yeah. It, it does feel like, a, you know, he'll be the the guy that keeps that spot warm until they probably make a move in the draft. That That feels like him and a Frank Reich and, and Jacoby Brissett reunion is the case. But I, I do think that is a, as you say, the kind of the ideal choice where you're, you're, you're getting a guy that not only could maximize the backup position, but also give you a, a serviceable to solid starter in the event that, you know, Ritter falls on his face face. So uh, certainly a worthwhile notion of, you know, I, I would bet money basically that we will see Jacoby Brissett in the NFC South this upcoming season. Yeah, and that's that's the bummer thing. It's like any, anytime you identify somebody you really want, where are they going to go? Some other team. Yeah, yeah. There you Even go. When they got money. But. So Dave, uh, let the people know. You know what's what's going on at the Falcoholic in in addition to you know one impending article that may or may not get written from Aaron Freeman. Yeah, you you beat me to the punch because I was going to lead with that, but. Um, you know, I, I think the, the real doldrums of the off season are over. So, um, I know our draft coverage is going to start revering, revering, revving up, um, Kevin Knight, uh, Everett Glaze and Will McFadden will have a lot of draft profiles, uh, mocks. Everybody loves the mocks and, uh, we'll start really thinking about free agency some more too. I know we've, we've written up sort of what our expectations are, but I know everything's going to get into gear. So I'll have a lot of thoughts on the moves as they happen. And of course, any, major changes to the quarterback market that nobody can stop talking about. So. Absolutely. Absolutely. So guys, you can look forward to that over at the Falcoholic and I, I will 
make an effort to work on that article. So hopefully that, that I'm will really be looking up. forward to it actually. Yeah. So there you go. Yeah. So, um, you know, that's, that's basically the thing I'm, I'm realizing I should do. Like any of my half-baked ideas, just instead of podcasting about it, then just write a, an article about it. Just crank I mean, that crank should it. be like in our banner is like half-baked ideas. Welcome here. Cause that's 90% of what I write. So yeah. There you go. There you go, guys. So go check that out at, at the Falcoholic. Of course, check out Dave at the Falcoholic on Twitter. Um, and uh, Dave, I really appreciate you joining me. I'm sure we will be talking again next month, probably at a time when the Falcons are actually making some of these moves. And so we can sort of pick your brain on how free agency goes. And I'm sure we'll be talking again in April ahead of the draft uh, when our attention turns to that. And we'll, we'll see if, if the Falcons have a first round pick. Right. You know, that's that's going to be a, a topic of debate for the next couple of weeks. Right. It really is. So, man, I hadn't even thought about that, but here we go. There you go. So, guys, look forward to future conversations with Dave Choate. I'm sure he will be on this podcast many, many times over the uh, coming months. So you can look forward to that. Continue to make Lockdown Falcons your first listen so that you can check out that premium Dave Choate content as well as other future guests. Tomorrow's episode, we will be joined by PFF's Brad Spielberger to probably talk about free agency and salary cap stuff and, and draft stuff, all the things that Brad is an expert on over at PFF. So that is the plan for tomorrow's episode. Please continue to make Locked On Falcons your first listen. Make Locked On NFL Draft, Locked On NFL, Locked On Sports Atlanta, Locked On Hawks, Locked On Bulldogs, Locked On Braves, your second listen, all available as part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. <laughs>